Hello and good morning everyone. Good to see you. Uh, Paul Tranny here. Gonna dive into today's daily creative challenge. So thanks for hanging out. Big thank you to Evan Abrams. We got a full day of a lot of goodness. So um, it's good to have you here. Um, Garrett, I see you there. Welcome my friend. I'm on beants.net forward slash Adobe Live, uh, just so you know. So hop over there if you're joining me elsewhere. Um, that would be great. Uh, but in general, we'll dive into this. But I want to know how everybody's doing. Chad, what's up? Sean, Sam's in the house. I always like seeing Sam. Uh, Ted, Angie, awesome. Marsha, this is good. Rachel, awesome. Uh, best part of your workday. Oh, yes. Thank you. Adobe Live is is pretty fun. I actually I really enjoyed Evan Abrams. A um, uh, little uh, After Effects uh, tutorial, if you will, that just... Uh, and just finished, but uh, we're going to dive into Photoshop, which is going to be even more fun. Yeah, I said it. Actually, uh, it all works together, you know. Um, I think today uh, is inspired a lot by motion. That's why it kind of works together. Let me move my head over there. But here I am on Behance.net, all about blur effects. So give images speed, depth, and focus with uh, blur effects. So grab that file. You can see I actually hardly have that file open. Let's just go ahead and reset it really fast. This is actually what we're gonna be making just to kind of inspire you. That is the uh, goal. So uh, let me open up that file, by the way. You can see it right here. Click to download, right? It's gonna be what I already have on my desktop, but you'll see a couple little butterflies right in there and a little quote um, as well, just to hopefully inspire you. Hopefully after this, I don't know, this uh, the, uh, staying at home that we will emerge beautiful butterflies is the plan. So uh, yeah, that's the inspiration for this piece. What's up NYC in the house? Judith, what's up? Scott's in the house. Scott Jin, cool. Uh, does anyone have video? Uh, yeah, you're. Uh, we, I have it right now. I'm actually on the video, <laughs> but um, <laughs> we do uh, we do plenty of these streams. Uh, everything from graphic design to image manipulation to all everything. So uh, good to have you here. Let me just do this really fast. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, let me copy this and let's go ahead and get started now. Um, let me just make sure everybody has this link, quite frankly. There you go. Cool. Okay, so let's get this party started. I don't know once why my audio uh, little speaker starts. Why? Why? Okay, gotta love the butterflies. If you know me, I use lots of butterflies and flowers and skulls. But really, we're gonna... Alexa, stop. Oh, Alexa. All right, so here I just turned off those other layers, right? So we just have this city layer. And you're lucky enough to see, in fact, let's do, whoop, ooh, nice. This is already a smart object, just so you know. So I already kind of, um, uh, I already kind of want to, um, uh, just so you know, I just did a right click, convert it to a smart object. I can convert it back to layers, just so you know, but I've converted this to a smart object. So we can kind of dive into this. This protects all the pixels because we're going to do a lot of blurs that we want to adjust later on, okay? But um, if you have your coffee and you have your layer selected, we'll go ahead and duplicate this layer because what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to do some playing around with this. But we're going to add uh, some nice uh, depth of field. So I'm going to do a Command J, Control J if you're on a PC. Uh, and then, so we'll have like a blurry layer and a clear layer, right? So city blur, let's do that, boom. Go up to filter, we have blurs and then we have blur gallery as well. So these are ones that we've had forever. I use Gaussian blur a lot still these days, but oftentimes I'll just jump into blur gallery, which is super cool. Uh, 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 okay. <laughs> oh, yes, Co. I hear what you're saying. Okay. Uh, blur. Um, again, I can go into Gaussian Blur, any one of these. I might get into one of these other, like, surface blurs uh, a little bit later uh, if I have time. Uh, but if I wanted to blur the whole thing, I would typically go to Gaussian Blur, and you can see, obviously, what it does. Okay? We get it. We get it. Hit Cancel. Go to Filter. 
go into blur gallery, dive into tilt shift. Okay, so this type of photography, we're gonna make this look like a mini city. So that is the plan. We get these lines, hopefully you can see those right there, right? You see those, uh, this little wheel in the center as well? Oh, hello Bailey, uh, good to have you here. Portfolio reviews do happen uh, on a regular basis and I don't know the current schedule and I'm sorry. Um, I think there's gonna be some on Friday though, so check the schedule and let's do this. Um, so check this out. I have this little wheel right here. This controls the blur. You ready? Watch this. Do, 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 do. Dial that up, up, up. Make it look really blurry. What's happening here is, yeah, it's blurring it off uh, over the over this distance, right? Uh, but I'm also just basically changing these numbers. It's the equivalent of adjusting this slider. So we can watch that slider move from 83 pixels as I take this down to something a little bit more sensible. Uh, to maybe like 17. That looks pretty good, right? Maybe a little bit more, right? Maybe it's just directly below like that, okay? So that's kind of the blur I want. We can see it right over here. Zoop, right there. Zoop. And uh, now we can kind of play with these other controls, right? We could adjust the fall off, right? And you're gonna really have to think about what's gonna really make this sale. Like, sale? <laughs> What's this really gonna, <laughs> what's gonna really sell this as a mini city, if you will, like, um, and uh, just so you know, it's all, it's all gonna be about understanding like what this really looks like. Cause your focus is gonna be on these main buildings right here. Um, I'll trail this off, so I'm gonna move this down. There's gonna be more of a transition to blurriness uh, on the bottom portion as opposed to the top portion, right? Cause look, we could see much further uh, for this portion, portion, we're only seeing like a couple blocks. So that's kind of how I've adjusted uh, this particular blur, right? Something like that. And uh, once you get it the way you like it, click OK, and we're good to go. Jennifer, Susanna, what's up, William? Yes. All right, let's do this. Two coffees. Yeah, let's do this, everybody. All right, how's the music? Let me know how the music is. I was playing with it yesterday. Uh, I do song requests, or actually DJ Pac-Man does. He's, he's, he's on the ones and twos, as they say, immediately to my left. Uh, uh, no less than six feet to my left. But we can see the blur gallery, gallery right there. Okay. Um, what is not selling it, honestly? Oh, well, there's some more things I can do. I just thought of some stuff. Is... Uh, right up here, like what's happening here? Like this building should all be in focus, not just half of it, all right? So we need to get rid of some of that blur. That means, you do this actually a couple different ways. I can go to this, this layer, smart filter layer, this layer mask, select it. And I, I've had, I ran into people that like, this is a big problem people have is like, what layer am I on? So just be very mindful of those cases. Cause I had somebody who was painting on this layer and that's not what you want to do. Uh, so you want to make sure that layer is selected that, uh, and let's turn off that background, but that, um, that layer mask is selected. We'll go over here to our brush. We'll select our brush, right? Just so we can see it do its job, I'm gonna switch this to black in the foreground, and we can see we're painting, or we're removing the blur by painting on it, right? That's what I was doing right there, is just removing that blur, okay? But that's what I wanna do right here, and I'll zoom in on that so we can all see it in all of its glory. Thanks for hanging out with me too, I see you over there, Amir, uh, and George, uh, music is good, okay, good, good. Uh, just kind of painting and then just kind of removing, right, to sell this realism. I'm just using a normal uh, brush with a hard, um, hard edge, roughly, right, kind of doing something like that. Maybe the same thing for this building, right, kind of bringing back some of that. Um, by the way, I can always, I have that original layer that I can use as a reference. So kind of clicking there, going right here. Another thing you can do, this is kind of, I don't know, kind of a pro tip. Um, yeah, you could do that. You could do so many things. I have this as my original layer, but I can even just come over here and say, hey, you know what, just disable that filter mask, right, like that, or enable it, right, to see where the blur is and isn't, okay? 
All right, let's get back to work. We are working for a living is the plan. Right, so bringing out that. Here's something I, I, I might do is I might switch to my original and if I wanna grab a building, so let's just check out some of this blur and I should have made this even more drastic. But if I wanna grab that building kind of behind this current one, right back here, I can turn on my original layer, go to my selection tool, right? Hold down the Alt key or Option key uh, if you're on a PC and I can kind of select like that. Okay, so I can select this space uh, and then go back to my original layer, go to that layer mask, make sure that layer mask is selected, and then fill it. I do shift delete, but basically edit fill with our foreground color, which is gonna be black, so it's gonna remove uh, that blur, as you'll see in a second. All right. Uh, Okay, so Keith, what I'm using to just zoom in and out is I'm using the accessibility feature on Mac. But then I also have Zoom, Zoom It, which is another app. And then I also just got Mouse Pose, which will make it dark. So I could actually do this and oh, do this and this. So we can really kind of spotlight this because I really wanted to highlight some things today that are kind of small, right? So there we are. Hello, let's just open up a new Get that back to where we were, right? We have that kind of masked out. Cool thing is I can jump back into Blur Gallery like so, uh, just by double clicking on it and increase that blur if I want to a touch more, maybe drop it down a little bit more and adjust some more of those buildings. So I encourage you to do that as well. Uh, Amir, you have a question, let me know. I uh, would love to hear from you. Uh, yeah, so, so, and if you're just joining me, it looks like somebody's asking me about retouching images. Yeah, we do that all the time here. And that's typically what I start out a daily creative challenge with. So uh, join me typically the first day. I try to make these get a little bit more complex as we go along, right? That's why I already made a smart object. It's like, you know how to do it at this point. Okay, so let's move on. I have uh, more time to do this. This isn't, this isn't looking bad, but it's actually selling it a lot more. And now you know how to create blurs, modify, um, their um, uh, the mask for them and then we can get into some other things so we can turn on this monarch butterfly and we can put it on top of uh, that building oftentimes I'll convert that to a smart object so I can uh, in case I need to scale it up again but in this case we'll kind of scale it down a little and place it on that building right Shoop, right over there like so okay cool that's what I'm doing right there okay so he kind of matches he's not perfect this is Chicago, by the way. Um, I kind of screwed up the skyline, just so you know. Um, true confession, to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> there's a building that's missing, and I feel bad. Ugh, I gave you an edited file. Okay, so I want to make this um, butterfly a little bit darker. So we'll just go down in here to brightness and contrast. That's all I'm doing is adding an adjustment layer. Adds this adjustment layer. Typically, it will darken everything, as you can see, as I take the brightness down, but we wanna just darken the Monarch Butterfly. So right over here, hold down the Option key or Alt key on PC, click, click there, makes a clipping mask, and now that sells it like a little bit more, right? Setting it in that environment, okay? Attack of the Giant Butterfly, that's right. Cool, got that. We have this butterfly. We're gonna get more complex. By the way, I don't really need to add a blur here, but I can. I can come in here and add just like a slight blur to this um, to this butterfly. And what you could try is you could try field blur. What if you, cause I'm thinking maybe the edge of the wings might be a little blurry, right? <laughs> it's the biggest building in town. Yeah, I totally screwed up the biggest building in town. You are exactly right. Okay, so remember, we're just dealing with the butterfly. We can, we have this field blur, this little dot, right, that we can then control how blurry everything is. But I just wanna blur out the edge of the wings, kind of this top portion, just a little bit, right? And right down here, I can add another pin and then take this blur down like so, right? So now you can see it just kind of blurs out, right? The top part there and not this part right here. So this is really cool. It's called field blur, but think of it as more of like a point blur, 
being able to point, add these different points and, and blur out different uh, portions of an image. Uh, yeah, Godzilla should not be far behind. Let them fight. Hey, you know what? It's a daily creative challenge. Like, you, you make them fight. That would be awesome. Uh, yes, hello, Faisal. I see you. Awesome. Uh, sweet. So that's that's looking pretty good. We're selling it a little bit. Let's turn on this butterfly. Here's this butterfly. We're going to get even more complex with this one, right? Because I'm going to break it apart and then start blurring it. So there's a lot going on here, okay? Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, and I've done this before. I did this like about a month ago, kind of worked on something similar. But I'll just select with the lasso tool. I'll select wing, one wing. I'll hit Command X, I'll cut it and then paste it. So that's gonna be on its own layer. Uh, I'll go to this side, take this wing, right down here with my lasso tool, cut, paste, there it is. We have our two wings. All right, now what I typically do is I'll turn these into smart objects, converting each wing into a smart object. Right, taking even the body, maybe converting it to a smart object, okay? Um, and then I can take all three of these smart objects and convert them to a new smart object. Convert to smart object. When I make something a smart object, it makes it a separate file. So double click on that. Here's my beautiful butterfly, right? Uh, so from this view, what I can do is I can go in here, I'll do Command T and if I, for transform, and then if I right click, I, it just gives me access to distort, because I actually want to distort this wing, right? Like so, zoop, like that, okay? I'll do the same thing with this other wing, Command T, distort, zoop, kind of move that one like so. Uh, if anything ever goes off the canvas, just go to image and then just do a reveal all, right? Now we can see all of that that butterfly. So I'm able angle, to angle this. The reason I made this a smart object is if I go to this wing, right? Here's this wing. I do a command T. <clears throat> it remembers um, how much I've angled it and all that fun stuff. So I could always kind of reset it if I want to. So make something in a smart object and then when you try to transform it again, like I'm doing right now with distort, I could always change it again. Um, and it's always gonna remember those angles, right? So with that done, let's save that. Let's close it. Let's go back to our main file. Here it is, beautiful butterfly. Move this over, Command T for transform, scale it down. Maybe, actually no, maybe we'll keep it pretty large. Let's keep it large, it's gonna be awesome. Like that, let's rotate it, right, like that. I'm gonna double click and go back into this fun little wing. I will distort this one a little bit more. So we're gonna push this back. And this is typically how I work, is I'll just play with how much of this should kind of like be distorted um, to get the perspective right, like that, okay? Uh, oh, or hold, ooh, Van Damme's teaching me stuff. Van Damme, I like it or hold the control slash command key and drag a point to distort. It's something I don't typically do, right? That's awesome, thank you so much, I love it. That's right, we have giant butterflies, bam, bam, there they are. And let's take this one, we're gonna have some fun with this one, you ready for this? For this fun butterfly over here, here's a fun thing we can do, hold down the option key, click, on that layer, when you hold an option key, it'll zoom to that layer. But for this butterfly, we wanna give it some fun blurs as well. So we're gonna to go to Blur Gallery and we're gonna go into Path Blur, okay? Like that, boom. Selecting Path Blur, you can see it automatically just gives it this crazy Path Blur right here actually is where you can see it, right? Uh, and then I can readjust this line like so. Boom, boom, curving that out. That, that girl, I do not know what to do with her. I'm gonna draw another line on the other side for this blur. So one wing is gonna go one direction, the other wing is gonna go the other direction, like so, bam, bam. Uh, for this center portion, by the way, I actually don't wanna have any blur, so let's just do this. Let's try this. Rolling over it, 
just outside of that blur, I'm gonna take that blur all the way down. That should remove that blur if I'm doing it correctly, and I should be, right? So again, right over here, we have this blur. You can adjust the blurriness, the direction as well for each one of these, right? Um, as I roll over this one, by the way, you might not have these turned on. What I have set up over here is edit blur shapes. So that's what gives me those extra arrows. See on, off, right? Like that, okay? Cool. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Jennifer has deals with the same issue. So that's what I want. Just like make it looks like it's like in motion um, and all that fun stuff. It is a little, uh, a little intense. I could always take that down globally right over here with the speed. If you're ever trying to match the blurriness in an image, you could start playing with uh, some of these different effects, whether it's Gaussian uniform or um, grain to, I use that to more, uh, more often than not to match a blur to a photo, right? So that's why you wanna get into those details, click okay. Right, we have that pretty good. This is a smart object, that's great. We can go ahead and make this a little bit larger, right? Hit enter and kind of get that into place like so, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, if we skip ahead, this is actually like my final, just so you know, I actually punched up the color a lot. Uh, you could see where I've kind of blurred out the top. Uh, you could see the full building. Is this the, oh gosh, the Willis Tower? I don't know. But you could see just this rendition with this butterfly created the same way, right? We can see, in this case, I, I didn't make it a, a the, the whole body, the wings, the body, uh, all one smart object. And I should have, because it would have just been easier to to, uh, I think, to manipulate, right? But again, done the same way. Let's stretch it out like that. There we are. And yes, we need Godzilla. I get it, right? Let's go back to ours. And I'd say everything is looking good. The nice thing is, is once this one's created, I could do a Command J to jump, bring that over here, Command T, flip horizontal, scale this one down, right? We can have another butterfly, so over here, Right, like that, and it could just be, again, attack of the wonderful butterflies, as you can see, cool. Uh, good, okay, cool. Uh, all right, Sam uh, says the burrs look good on this. So if Sam says it looks good, then it must look good. Uh, less, probably some more things I would do is I would probably crank up, make this look a little bit brighter, like the overall scene could be a little bit brighter uh, compared to the other one. Uh, a lot of times I'll jump in to make something look pretty, as you may know, is I'll go down here to my adjustment layers and I'll go to uh, color lookup, right? Already the colors look pretty darn fantastic, uh, to be honest with you, but I can go in and sort of use a different LUT and change the look entirely. Obviously Edgy Amber looks horrible, um, but you have some different options to kind of play with it. Uh, what this looks like. So if I want to make this look more like moonlight, we have it right there. You get the idea, okay? That's just an extra bonus thing for fun. Uh, I did want to get into, so save that out, post it. Would love to see what you make over here in fancy Discord. Uh, would be cool to see uh, what you make, but also you can in Dimension, and that's why my machine was running so fast. In Dimension, I just made this. It should be out there on my desktop. Let's zoom out. This is gonna take me a second, but basically a dimension allows me to, you know, sort of composite in 3D just like Photoshop does in 2D, okay? So if I select camera, I could turn on the focus so it has its sort of sense of blur as well where I can set a focus point to this flower and I can decrease or increase the blur amount, right? So now I focused on this little flower over here and I can render it out that way, which is fantastic, um, which is what I want to do. Uh, then what you can do is you can load that into Photoshop and you're gonna have access to all that blur content uh, as well. But I only have a couple minutes left. Um, we can see it right in here. And uh, obviously the different blurs associated with that uh, as well, okay? Um, yeah, so that's just kind of cool. Something I wanted to show you 
Uh, also, you, there is a way, I, I'm gonna have to talk to you guys more about this offline. Um, but um, yeah, basically being able to take a photo and, and make, uh, adjust the, um, the blur after you've taken the photo. Right, so I will have to post a video that I made of that process uh, to chat or later on. In fact, you know what? If you follow me on social media, I would love to uh, show it to you. So that's what I will do. Um, yes, thank you, Alexander. You know what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Thank you, sir. You, I'm gonna have to post that video to, to social media because I actually do not have it right now. Um, but uh, also wanted to show you the schedule. So who, ooh, motion graphics up next. That's awesome. Cool, Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge, some package design, XD, drawing along with Kyle, which will be super fun, and then the design off. So a full day, I'm super glad, because you know what, this image begs for motion, and I'm glad we're talking about motion graphics next. So uh, I'll post a, a link to that video in chat uh, that I made, allowing you to control the blur after you've taken like a picture of a photo, or, or made something in dimension. So thank you, Victor and Jennifer and everyone. You guys are fantastic. I really appreciate it. Hopefully everybody's staying creative and staying safe. I really appreciate you, uh, all you wonderful people. Uh, and I will see you soon. I'm gonna try to not get cut off this time. How about that? So we will be right back. Thanks everybody.